out there. This is Wake Angel 2001, and it is time for Comic-Con 2018. This year, I'll be attending Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And, of course, I will be wearing a costume all three days. Uh, this time, I wanted to go with something new and interesting, so I went with Infinite. Yeah, I've kind of been on an Infinite kick lately with uh, the custom figures I made of him, and now I will be him for a few days. So, the most important part of the costume, of course, is the mask, because that's just the iconic part of the look. Um, so, first the, first of all, I made a paper mock-up. Uh, this is uh, to let me know how it'll fit on my face and, you know, all the all the shapes and stuff because, like, you know, the, you know, it's a big old mask. This is really the most important part. Uh, so once I had the paper mock-up telling me the size and shapes to make everything, I cut all the planes out of a uh, foam board and stuck them together into a single mask structure. Um, of course, I carved in a second eye hole because I like having depth perception. You'll see how I fix that later. And then to make it look like a single smooth piece, it's all basically covered with a single layer of craft foam, which covers up the seams. Well, you know, most of the seams. There's still some seams at the bottom because um, I could just couldn't cut the shapes too precisely. I'm, I'm not a machine, you know. <laughs> so with the mask covered in craft foam, I spray painted it silver. I, man, I, like, I never use spray paint. I've had this silver spray paint for such a long time. This is really the first project I actually used it on. Uh, so once the head is silver, I painted the highlights, such as the black guy liner that goes around the eye hole of the mask, and on the right side, the lightning bolt is painted in. Um, now, like I said, we'll get into how I fix this whole second eye hole issue later on, but uh, first got to look at the straps. I decided to go with an inverted T shape for the strap, because this would keep it on my head more effectively, because if it was just a single band going in the middle, it might slip up or down, because... You know, it, it's a little bit small. I just didn't have enough material to make the max very big. So it, it's actually just a tiny bit undersized, so this just holds it more stably on my head. When I'm wearing the mask, I gotta be careful not to open my mouth too wide or else I might end up popping a seam or something. <clears throat> uh, the ears are simply cut out of craft foam, of course, and they are stuck onto the head. Originally, I had them sticking out a little, a little bit more, thinking that it would photograph better, but it kind of made him look... It kind of made Infinite look like he was a big old mouse rather than a jackal, so I made sure to sweep them back. <clears throat> and here you're also seeing how I fix the eye hole issue. Uh, the eye holes are filled with a colored mesh, which I can easily see out of, but uh, at least from a distance, you wouldn't be able to see into them to see my actual face in there. Uh, so the right eye is covered with a black mesh to blend in with the lightning bolt, and the left eye is covered with a red mesh to look like Infinite's glowing red eye. Putting mesh in the eye holes also allows me to continue to breathe, you know, because the mask is pretty much seamless and the eye holes are really the only place where air can flow in and out. So yeah, like um, breathable eye holes are very important, and that's why I didn't use a material like cellophane, because cellophane would have been more, you know, airtight. Uh, now after that, it's mostly just the clothing elements. Uh, the gloves are just an ordinary pair of black leather gloves, which I put a strap on the back to look like the random Velcro strap that he has back there. And the shoes are just a pair of Velcro shoes I got off of a clearance rack for 14 bucks. Um, I then painted silver parts on the shoes to approximate the pattern that Silver has on his shoes. Uh, the tail is very basic. It's just one of those really thick pipe cleaners uh, that's like six feet long, bent over itself into thirds. And um, I used this uh, this white terry cloth I got from a Dollar Tree to make the little white bit at the tip. It's a small, skinny little tail, but it has the advantage of not getting in the way. The Phantom Ruby is just the three triangles of craft foam arranged into a pyramid shape with a purple stripe. You know, I don't want to go too fancy on that. So, um, th that's all the detailing. So the only thing left now is the actual body part, what I'm actually wearing for the costume. I was originally going to get one of those um, morph suits to be the black underlayer of the costume, but those things cost like 35 bucks. Um, so I instead went with a pair of tights that I got at uh, Forever 21 for 4 bucks, and uh, a similar shirt that I got at a Kmart for an extra 5 I think. Uh, it costs a heck of a lot less than a morph suit is what I'm trying to get at, and it visually looks the same. In fact, it has a benefit since it's in two pieces, it'll be a lot easier to go to the bathroom. Um, I'm also, like, I used part of a t-shirt to make uh, the little fur that Infinite has around his neck, which looks like a scarf. And, of course, I'm wearing a white wig. I got it up at a five below for five bucks. Okay, now here's the part where I really have to thank my mother. 
she stitched on this pattern onto the back of the shirt in um in infinite's fur pattern which i think is supposed to invoke the look of a rib cage and uh from the front you can see how it comes around uh you know around where the phantom ruby is positioned and um you know that that just it, it captures a look like uh getting this shirt to look right was really the most important part aside from the mask to make sure that the costume looked like infinite and not just me walking around in a black shirt so with all the elements completed let's take a look at the costume complete and you know with me wearing it and here we go i definitely won't want to get on the train looking like this but the costume is pretty darn fun otherwise it's easy enough to move around in it's um i'm just gonna have to contend with not having pockets uh that that's uh, that's the thing i liked about my sonic costume i was able to get away with wearing a pair of blue jeans giving myself comfortable pockets to work with with this i'm gonna have to be sure to carry a bag around which is going to be a problem, but hey, you know, when we dress up for costuming, that's uh, that's uh, the cross that we have to bear. Um, so, yep, this is pretty much what I'm going to look like. If any of you are attending Comic-Con and you've seen this YouTube video, uh, see if you see a guy walk around a crazy mask like this, and um, that's me, Wake Angel 2001. So, uh, yep, this is my Comic-Con costume this year. And uh, I'm going to save it because I put this much effort into making it. I'm gonna, probably going to wear it for other conventions I go into in the future. But, you know, that's all That's all tomorrow's Wake Angel's problem. But for now, Wake Angel, this is this is what I'm going to look like. So, uh, see some of you at Comic-Con. See others of you later on after Comic-Con when I post my videos. And uh, this is Wake Angel 2001, signing off for now.